Hey, it's Ben, and this is Drambo by Beep Street. Um, this video is going to be about all of the MIDI modules and how to, mostly about how to get MIDI out of um, Drambo in addition to how to use the MIDI modules. Um, so the MIDI modules are all the modules under the MIDI section. Um, so you have things like input, output, um, how to like modulate parameters within Drambo with uh, MIDI CC, um, how to get stuff out of um, Drambo in MIDI. Um, and then you have a couple generators. So if you want to send CC messages out of um, Drambo or even use some of like the CV tools to convert back into MIDI notes, um, and then all of the fun, like MIDI effects or MIDI pro processors. Um, but basically it lets you do cool things to your um, patterns. Um, take something really simple like this and turn it into this sort of thing, which I think sounds much more um, fun. So real quick, um, just to give you an idea of what's happening here, you have uh, an arpeggiator, which is going into a chord generator, um, and then some of those notes are not playing because it's going through a MIDI chance module, and then um, we can mess with the timing and the velocity with a humanizer, um, and then if we want to, we can transpose some of these notes. And that's all going through the MIDI to CV module, which is where um, the like regular Drambo modules take over. It's all being quantized to scale. Um, and then it's going to just a very simple FM operator with a little bit of modulation from velocity, which was being humanized. Um, so there's all sorts of cool things that you can do with this. And I'll, I'm just going to walk through kind of each one by one and use some of them in combination, like I'm doing here. So I'm going to start from scratch. So just a note, I am using AUM because I'm going to be um, sending MIDI out of Drambo a little bit later on um, to other apps. And I do want to note, um, all of the MIDI stuff generally has to take place before a MIDI to CV module, which is on all of my tracks, um, or the instrument rack, um, which can have a MIDI mode. Um, the reason why that is, is because all of this stuff in the racks uses CV. Um, so CV control voltage, um, this is like the, the modular stuff. So, um, with regular MIDI notes, when you play a note, um, it's just going to be the the note number and the like a note on message and a note off message, and then the velocity. And of course, you can send CC message, messages as well. Um, but everything's kind of together in one little like package. So a MIDI note contains the note, um, the gate and the velocity. With modular, all those things are sort of decoupled. Um, and they're still used in conjunction most of the time. But when I play on my keyboard controller or play in the trackpad, um, it's going through a MIDI to CV conversion. And then each of those notes is turned into a voice in CV. And that voice is going to carry kind of separately the like the trigger or gate events, the velocity and the pitch, either through the keyboard or you know the pitch input. Um, and that's what allows you to do all of the cool modulations and that kind of thing. Um, just signal routing in Drambo and in modular systems to begin with. But there are all sorts of things that you can do to MIDI signal as well. You just have to do it before the um, MIDI to CV conversion, wherever that takes place. So I'm going to start with um, just a simple little 
um, FM operator, and I'm going to work my way down through the processors to begin with. So we'll start with ARP or arpeggiator. So this is going to let you arpeggiate your notes. Um, and arpeggiate basically just means play them in quick succession um, in some sort of order. Um, and of course, that's not the real definition, but that's how I would describe it. Um, so with this arpeggiator, you can control the rate. You can go very fast or very slow. And um, you have a couple different like beat divisions that you can sync to. Um, you can also sync to just frequency. So it can be kind of fun. Go really fast if you want to. Um, and then you can control the gate. So if this was going through like an amp envelope that had sustain, So you can kind of hear that. So you can control the gate. There, sorry, I forgot what I was doing. Um, and then the last knob that you have is range. So I'm going to put down some keys and just hold it there. Um, let me go back to my keypad. I like the keyboard right there. Because then I can just hold them down. So range is basically on one, it's just playing the notes that you put in, and then the two, three, four are octaves above the keys that you put in. Um, and then you can also work with your play mode. So you can go up. You can go up and down. You can go down. You can go random. Or you can do as played in the order that you play them. So, you know, already a lot of fun. Um, one cool thing you can do. This little gate input basically takes over the the timing and waits for a gate to move to the next step of the arpeggiator or arpeggiation uh, arpeggio i guess so here i just have a trigger button but you could do this with you know for example let's take this away for a second um the gate and velocity sequencer so you can come up with your own little like pattern And play that to the clock. And we'll just put some more notes in. So you don't just have to play like in a standard um, beat divisions. You could send a MIDI signal in and gate it on your own. You could use a trigger. You can do whatever you want. You can use a gate and velocity sequencer. Um, you can gate it to, not that it's particularly musical, but you can gate it to an oscillator, which can be kind of wild. But you can do it. Okay. Um, so one really cool thing you can do, one of many cool things you can do, um, well, first I'm going to use the chord, and then we'll go back. So chord is basically just going to generate a chord out of the note that you put in, and it's going to do that just by adding semitones above or below using these shift knobs. So if I just play a note, and these are all set to zero, there's no notes being added above or below. But if I add some above... Now there's going to be two notes, fifth, do an octave, do an octave below, and then on the right side, um, the shift goes up to 24, two octaves above, two below. Now, just 
want to point out again this have to has to come before the um midi to cv so if you put this in after the midi to cv um your whatever modules you have are going to be looking for cv signal in most cases and they can't get it directly from the uh, midi modules so it has to come over here um, and with some things like the chord module you're going to need more than one voice to do anything with it um, so just keep that in mind um, but if you're not hearing the midi effect look at where it is and look at where it's getting its midi from um, so my midi to cv is getting chord my chord is getting it from the track okay um, so you can do things like combine your uh, modules together and you can arpeggiate into a chord this is very fun and you know once you start adding in a bunch of like extra notes you may want to use the cv quantizer um, to put in your own scale just to make sure everything sounds good And then if you wanted to, you could have like a slow arp into a chord, into another arpeggiator, like there's no limit, um, anything like that. So you have these sort of like quasi sequences set up where it's a slow arp going into a chord module and then those chords are being sent back into an arpeggiator. We could chord that again, just with like an octave. I don't know. It's just, it's fun. You can mess with the gate here. It's a lot of fun, just like experimenting and seeing what happens. So anyways, that's ARP and chord. So next, um, we've got the chant module. Um, so this is exactly what it sounds like. It's going to let a percentage of MIDI notes that come in through. Um, so it's going to be like percent played. So on 100, every note's going to play. And then if I bring it down really low, almost no, no notes are going to play. Here, I'll play on the keyboard so you can see. Um, but this is like a really quick way to add some variety to maybe like an arpeggiated, arpeggiated sequence. So I've got my arpeggio, it's just going through the arpeggio, but then it's only playing 10% of those notes coming through. I've got a long decay. So that's how you can use that. Now chord actually kind of cool um, take this away so as I play you're gonna see my you know, I'm not doing this with my mouse but the keys are gonna light up so it's only letting like every note is being treated individually if I turn chord on maybe bring this up a little bit maybe I have to do this this way Okay, so basically it's going to treat all of the notes together as a chord and it's either going to let all of them through or none of them through versus if I take chord mode off, it's going to calculate that percentage for each individual note, MIDI note that comes in. Um, so it's just two different ways you can treat the input. And I may just leave the sequence in so I can do other things. So, what do we have next? Delay, pretty straightforward. Um, you know, on its own, this isn't gonna be interesting, but it is a MIDI delay. It can go up to one second, and you can chain this together if you want, like, a lot of MIDI delay together, you could do that. So, you know, I stopped it, it continues to play. Play those notes, we're gonna wait three seconds to hear them. There they are. Um, but this can you know, come in handy 
Um, you know, maybe if you do some other things and use a MIDI mixer signal, um, or, you know, for right now, let's do this. Um, I'm going to pull up like another chain and then we'll use a mixer together. So I have another MIDI to CV and then um, I'm just going to copy this. Okay. Um, some voices and then we need to mix them together. And we'll bring up that delay again. Okay, so this MIDI to TV, this little chain, is going to get its input right from the track. But then I want this chain to get its input from the delay. And I'll say a second delay. And then um, maybe before that, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. We'll do a transpose. And this is just going to be like an octave down. So I play a note, I hear it first on this chain and then second on this chain. So that's using uh, two like different MIDI to CV sectioned racks, whatever you want to call them. Um, it's almost like a MIDI echo basically, uh, but then you can process that delay in whatever way that you want. Um, so it can be used to very cool effect. And this is just one way that you could use it. Um, so next, the humanizer. Um, I was playing around with this a little bit earlier, but let's see what I can do here. So basically it's just going to kind of randomize these three um, different parts of your MIDI. So if we change the offset, would help if we add like a it sounds like it's a little bit off and um, we could mess with the velocity now you can hear it <laughs> sometimes I'm doing these and I you know I'm I want to think that I'm doing it the right way, but I'm not always doing it the right way. Um, so now, now you can hear a little bit of a difference. Um, and if we mess with the gate and do something with the gate. So there's like a little bit of longer or shorter gates and offset as you know it's either like a little bit before or behind on the time and then the velocity we could mess with the decay on velocity so sometimes it decays a little bit longer sometimes it's shorter um, anyways this is like a randomizer um, for your MIDI that's how I would describe it What do we have next? Okay, so the MIDI mixer, this is really fun. Um, we're gonna need a couple different MIDI sources. So what I could do, say maybe like I want a chord, I'm gonna get rid of my sequence. I'll make all of these a little bit longer. Okay, so um, first I just want my track input. Okay, and then I also want a chord input. Maybe like separately. And then maybe on top of that, I would like, instead of the, just the ARP or the chord, maybe I want that like chord through an arpeggiator. So I have like one voice, which is just the notes that I'm playing. And then it's also going through that fun little chord and then arp to make this goofy little <laughs> sequence, which I, I do kind of like. Um, and, oh, never mentioned this, although I was doing it before, these are all P-lockable. 
And then some of these are uh, modulatable. <laughs> That's just fun to me. Now, some of these you're gonna, like, get rid of this. Okay, so like, I have my cord. If I wanna mess with all of my P locks here, you're not gonna hear anything because some of these are like, they only are, like the parameters only matter when the MIDI note is generated. So on this part of the sequence, the shifting the chord parameters doesn't do anything. It only matters when the note is generated. So I'll get rid of those. And then you can hear it. Um, so do, do just keep that in mind. Um, with your arpeggiator, you can do them like at any part in the sequence. I don't know. It's just a lot of cool ways that you can use this. So the MIDI mixer, you know, you could have two different MIDI controllers, or maybe, I don't know if you could do that. Scratch that. Uh, but you can use different MIDI modules. You can take MIDI from different tracks and mix it together in that way. Um, so it's, it can be used in a lot of ways. Um, but right now, you cannot get MIDI from different controllers using the MIDI mixer. Um, so next got the note filter. Um, so this is basically, it allows you to create like layers that are filtered by the notes coming in. Um, so I'm gonna just kind of keep this here and I jump to another track. We'll mute this one in case I do play anything. Jump to this track. Um, so let's create an instrument rack and then we're gonna do a layer mixer and we'll just do two layers. So what I would do here, I'm going to put in that note filter. And let's just say we'll leave it at C2, C minus two, and then go to like B1 for here. Now, if I just put like a, you know, I love that FM operator because it's just simple. Um, you know, I'm playing above C2 and I still hear the FM operator because it's looking to the instrument rack for all of its CV signal. So I need to put in another MIDI to CV. So now it's looking to my MIDI to CV converter on this layer in the rack um, and all the notes below C2 aren't coming in anymore. So now I can hear it. So what this would allow me to do is just like split um, split my layers up into different like sections of the keyboard. So we'll do another note filter. And we'll just change that from down low to right there. And here, I'm going to do the same thing, but just with Ah, still. Um, made the mistake I just mentioned that you should not make. So now below C2, I've got this layer, and then above C2, I've got this layer. So you could have different numbers of voices that, you know, this could be like uh, a mono, and then this could be not mono. But anyways, that's how you would set up um, a note filter or like filtering. Um, if you want to do this in a rack, you can do it on, in a rack, or you could just have like one track. Um, and if you're setting your tracks to receive like all the time, you could set up like sort of a, an instrument across a couple tracks using the note filter um, if you wanted to use that effect. So we'll go back here, we'll unmute, and see what we have next. Okay, so MIDI to poly. This one's really fun too. So MIDI to poly basically splits your like incoming MIDI notes across um, four different outputs. Um, and I'm gonna jump to another track to show you kind of what that looks like. 
Um, and let me set up some racks real quick. You don't have to watch me do that. Okay. So now I actually have some instrument racks on here. Um, they're all in MIDI mode. Um, so you can see they have like the voice um, setting built into the rack. Um, and you're only going to hear the last one because that's on the end of the rack. Um, so I'll add a mixer. Now you you will hear all of them. Um, and, you know, right now you're hearing all of them at the same time because they're all getting their MIDI directly from the track. And that's when I'm playing it. Um, so if I use the MIDI to poly, this has four different outputs. Um, and it's sort of going to go like one after the other on here. Try and shrink these down a little bit. Two. And then my last one. So now it'll be like one after the other. Now these can still be polyphonic if I want them to be. Um, and if I play a little quicker, you might still hear it. Um, so it can be, I don't know, really fun. I think that sounds awesome, just how it splits across different sounds in some cases. Um, so that's how I, like my first, um, intuition about how to use this is just to play like different sounds um but there's probably other things that you could do i'm sure there are um so it's sort of like a midi splitter i guess so the next one is the midi retrigger <laughs> And all that's going to do is basically re-trigger the note at the rate that you set along the time division or time base that you set. And, you know, if you do this on every step, it's kind of like, it's repetitive, it's a little bit overbearing, um, but you can P-lock again. And I think you can probably hear this. Let's mute the other one. So it's almost, it's actually like dividing the track into re-triggers or the, like the beat or the step. Um, so it's not re-triggering one time at the same rate. It's kind of like splitting the beat into two re-triggers or three re-triggers or four re-triggers. Um, but then you can also mess, mess with the velocity. Um, this is not going to be affected by the velocity unless we tell it to be affected by the velocity. No. <laughs> velocity. Yeah, you can hear it. It's there. Um, but this is one way to kind of mess with like your, the pattern, like the tempo, um, your sequence. That's what I mean. Um, so that last one is transpose. And this is kind of cool. So in addition to being able to mess with the... Just like the transposition, um, you can also set the interval that you're transposing by. So, and of course, this could be sequenced um, or p locked. So, let's just set that up really quick with like a CV sequencer. Wow. 
And then, of course, if we set this to a scale, it would sound even better. Um, but we'd have to go into the racks and set our CP quantizer. Um, and I'm not going to do that right now. Sounds kind of cool anyways. But, um, so that's the transpose uh, module. So those are all of the MIDI processors. But you probably saw there's a couple other ones in there. Um, and that's more for, like, getting MIDI in or out um, of Drambo. So I'm going to switch gears. So I'm going to open up. This is getting a little bit like convoluted. I'm just going to start anew. And um, actually, since now I'm going to be looking at like sending MIDI out, um, why don't we just use the MIDI sequencer template? Um, and the MIDI sequencer template has a MIDI output on every single track, uh, MIDI output module. And that's what's going to let us send MIDI to other apps. So let me just open up a new channel in AUM. And DRC. So we're going to tell it to get MIDI from our Trambo audio unit. And maybe just on a specific channel, like one. So here, you're going to note the MIDI output module, which is under input output. Um, you can set the like the source. And then I think in AUM or as AUV3, you basically just have MIDI out. Um, and then you have your different channels that you can send to. We're sending on one. So I'm sending my MIDI out to DRC. And I can record in a quick sequence. Make this a little bit longer than a pattern so we don't get super, super bored of listening to me doodle. Record that. You know, I could leave it there. I could, maybe I want to send like another sequence to DRC as well on this. And I'd like to make use of some of the cool like step components. So I'm going to jump. Now it's going to be like a little bit, it's almost like a polyrhythm kind of sort of thing. And of course I can mess around with all of my other MIDI modules. So here, um, you know, let's maybe like, I want to mess around with the chord module. I definitely don't want this on every single step. It's like, it's obnoxious. So what I'm gonna do is use my MIDI mixer. I'm gonna have a one, like just get your MIDI right from the track. So not, it's not too annoying. It's, you know, if you, if you like listening to my noodling, um, but then we could do a like MIDI chance. So like just like 25% of the time, our chord is gonna get input and then we'll hear that. Maybe even a little bit lower. There's enough going on here. So like a little bit too much. Not so bad um, with our MIDI chance.
So you can just send MIDI out. You can do that um, using the MIDI modules or like just a sequence that you put in. But then there's a couple other things going on here. So the um, note generator, if you, you know, like, let's say, let's leave this here, it doesn't really matter. Um, set up my FM operator and we'll use just like a CV sequencer and a gate sequencer. I'm just going to make some random stuff going on here. And then we'll quantize that to a scale. Under miscellaneous, we'll just do C major. Easy enough. I'm going to mute my other channels because I don't know if it's going to be in key. Um, Okay, so I've got like a little sequence set up with the um, really fun sequencers that you have here. But if I wanted to get this out with a MIDI output, there is nothing on this rack has any MIDI signal to output. Um, so what I can do is use the Note generator. So that's going to take gate signal. In this case, it's coming from the gate and velocity sequencer. It's going to take velocity, which is also coming from the gate and velocity sequencer. And then it's going to take pitch data or pi pitch messages, which is going from CV sequencer to the quantizer. So it's in scale. And that's going to be sent out on my uh, MIDI output channel. So now. If I send this to channel one, I have this sort of like generate, not generative, but um, we could make it get close to generative. Um, but we're using the modules. Thank you. Um, that are in like built in that normally we would use with like internal Drambo sound generators and we're sending it out to MIDI. Um, so that's how the MIDI note generator works. You need gate, velocity, and pitch, converts it back into a MIDI note, and then you can send it out. Um, now you can also use the MIDI note generator internally. Um, if we then convert it back to MIDI CC, we can have multiple voices. So normally, like if, if this was on this side, it's just one voice, even if we're in eight voice mode. So this is like all kind of on one voice, this part of the rack. But if I put it after my MIDI to CV converter, after the MIDI note generator, I can make full use of the polyphonic nature of Drambo um, and have a lot of fun um, doing so. So I'm pretty sure that's it. Um, I know there are other videos out there um, that talk about how to use like the CC modulation and the CC generator. Um, I have also done that, so I'm not going to do it again. Um, but I think th this list is probably going to keep growing as are you know all the other um, categories. Like th there's other stuff that's being added. Um, Last thing, I just want to mention that the um, included in the last update is the like, streamlining of how you can open presets and projects that are posted online um, and remind you that patch storage exists. So patch storage is the wonderful website that allows users to you know, post their creations to all these different platforms, Drambo included. Um, it's just a lot easier now to get stuff out of Drambo and then or out of patch storage and into Drambo um, or anywhere else that someone's posting things. So, like, for instance, RS2000 posted this really cool 
um, keyboard sound if you want it now. You can download it from patch storage. Get it from your downloads folder, share, go to more. You know, still, still a couple of things you have to do. Copy to Drambo or open in Drambo, but then you can play this beautiful Rhodes piano, which has no samples. Um, it's a work of art, um, really a big undertaking. Um, but hopefully what we'll see is a lot more people start sharing their projects um, and trying other people's projects and presets and building off of it and um, really taking advantage of all that Drambo has to offer. So thanks. That's it. Bye.